Well, hello, Lionheart. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are all of you today? Excellent. Well, it's going to be a fun day, but it's going to be a sad day, but we want to make it a celebration. Today is the last day of Dearly Departed Museum, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for Scott. Um, he is closing the doors of Dearly Departed Museum, uh, which is famous for the Jane Mansfield death car as well as many other things, but he will keep doing the tours. Um, it's just, it's so expensive to keep these kind of places in business, especially with um, Hollywood's tax situations and things like that. It's just, it's really hard to run a business and very expensive. And Scott's actually looking at it as a new chapter to do something different. And it's not to say that this museum will never come back uh, but, and he's not selling anything, he's actually going to put it all in storage, so um, today we are going to go to the farewell party, and I'm going to talk to Scott about some of his favorite moments and memories from the museum, and um, just kind of get other people's reactions that are there at the museum today, and then we'll hang around for the party afterward. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And Scott has been a great friend to me ever since he debuted the Jane Mansfield death car, He's been extremely cool to me and we've done many tours together. So, of course, I wanted to be here to document the closing. Looks like we have Luchador crossing now. Well, the lights are on for one last time. I kind of almost wonder whether this is going, I mean, it's he's calling this a celebration tonight. So, this is probably what Scott's funeral is going to be like. If we walk in there and there's party hats and everything, we'll know what to expect. But as you can see, as we walk up here and the doors one last time, you can see that sign right there. Oh, sad. Will there be a casket here? Will there not? Well, there's Scott, and uh, that kind of answers my first question as I was just opening the vlog with. Will this be a celebration? Will this be like a funeral? No that's, funeral. That's no, it was little... just a nice gathering of friends. Meg Zaney and Dave uh, Navarro came out Friday night and painted that for us as a goodbye to a uh, duly departed tour. So it's Pogo the Clown waving goodbye. Scott's over here entertaining friends. All right, Scott, you're you're in party mode. You're wearing all white, not even not even the customary black for Dearly Departed. You're in a great mood. What what does the future have in store? How are you feeling about today closing up shop? I you know I'm 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 sad to say goodbye to things, but I'm also relieved to not have the uh, responsibility and uh, you know I mean it's it's expensive, it's stressful. I mean that's not why we're shutting down. We're shutting down because I got to do other things, and I you know I don't have I have 20 years left of me, and I don't want to. I just want to enjoy it. So by removing this stuff from my life for a couple of years and putting it away, we're not getting rid of anything. It'll be a really nice. It'll be very liberating to go out and be able to enjoy doing this kind of work again like I used to exploring stuff and finding stuff and, and that's what I miss the most because this is this is a job and yeah it's cool I made my, my career and my uh, my dream come true by opening my museum and now it's on to the next dream whatever that is but uh, yeah. so what will happen to the car Everything's going to storage. Okay. Everything is going to be very carefully packed away and uh, and documented and uh, and you'll probably be seeing a lot of it on you know online here and there artifacts and stories. And hint, hint, like hint. So, so uh, yeah. So we're, uh, you know I'm just really excited about heading to a different direction. This is sad, but but I'm happy. Now, how long have you been doing this? Like this museum. And, and everything involved, tours and everything in Hollywood. I moved here in 1994 to do Graveline tours. So I started in the quote dark tourism back then. And then I was with that company for a few years and then I moved to London. And, uh, and then the company fell apart. But while I was in London, I started my Find a Death website. And I started you know, documenting the ends of people's biographies. And then, uh, so I moved back to America. And by that time, Graveline was gone. 
So I was working for one of the other tour companies, and I was good. I was good at what I did because I do my own research. They give you a bus and tell you to fuck off for two hours and come back with a, you know, with, and get another bunch of twelve people. So I was showing them really cute grand up buses like that, and that's not what mom and pop from Iowa will want to see. They don't want to see where you know Walt Disney croaked or something like that. So I quit because those guys had me training their new drivers, and I wasn't getting compensated. I was getting twenty dollars to do a tour plus tips. I don't know. Yeah. So I quit <laughs> and I started my own company. It's a very Reader's Digest. And then I've been collecting this stuff since I was a kid. Uh, you know, I, I, you heard the story about my mom's mosaic made out of car accident glass. Yeah. There's an address from a building around the corner here where a woman I knew when I was growing up got murdered. And uh, and I took a, I was 15 and I grabbed a screwdriver, grabbed the address off the house and saved it. About five years ago, I realized I had this thing, and now it's in the lobby here. She died 40 years ago, but now people are learning about her every week. Yeah. So all this stuff is out on display, and it's my dream to have this museum. You know, to have a place for, for my friends and my, my, my friends to hang out and my customers to come and check it out. And my dream came true. Uh, how, and it's all been a progression from the time you were a kid. It's not like you had to do anything else. You kind of just always got to roll into... Something else that took you into doing I more. I didn't have any like, may as well. If I, did, if I had any idea today what this was going to entail, I never would have done it. Ever. Yeah. So it was just like one day after the other, gotta do this, gotta do that. And that's, you know, so I would never, had I known the big picture, done it. No way. Now, now that you have done it, what would you say are some of your be your favorite moments and some of like the maybe some of the more bizarre moments that have happened here? I mean, I know you had Anthony Bourdain mm -hmm. take the tour with you. And he actually done a lot of celebrity tours, mm -hmm. but there must be some things that stick out in your mind from being here. Well, the, like the, the 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 magnum opus is Tarantino. You know, that was that was the magical moment. And that's what made truly all all of this for 25 years. That's what brought it all together for me. And that was like acknowledgement and respect. And for those who don't know, you had a very big part in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Would you like to say? I wasn't a big part, but I just it was a big the, part. I was helped on the in the historic background. You took Tarantino around on tours and told him the stories of what really happened. Right, I mean, yeah. that's a big deal. It was a big deal. Yeah. But that, you know, that was the last ten minutes of the movie. So. We, but you <laughs> but were a historical. It I was, mean, it was a, that, so that to me was the best. You know, the Tarantino thing. You know, uh, Kesha and the girls next door and all that stuff was always. It's a blast. Um, you know, this the shit is the, the politics. You know, the, the neighborhoods and you know people running out and taking my license plate number and reporting me and that's the know, stuff people don't know. And the police and you know, it happened again yesterday. I'm probably going to get banned from going on Cielo Drive soon. You know, and I go there for five minutes every week. That's it. Yeah. But people are coming out there, and, you know, taking pictures of my bus. It's like I'm tired. You yeah. Know? I, I don't like the fight anymore. I just don't like the fight. I came here to celebrate and. And, you know, everything I celebrate is being taken away in dump, tr dump trucks and yeah. being not allowed. So that's the bad part. That's the part that's really upsetting. Uh, you know, so I don't have to. I won't be in my face every day. Yeah. And uh, and you know, and like you said, doors because of the crazy people that walk in here and call me a bad person for saying that. I don't give a shit. They're nuts. Yeah. I come in here. A guy came in with a dead bird. You know, and sat down with petting a dead bird. It's like they're fucking crazy. Finding needles in my parking lot. Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sorry yeah. about my language, but fuck this. <laughs> so yeah, maybe in a couple of years this place will clean up. Maybe so. And I. You know, I don't. I don't want to be ashamed of where I live. I want to enjoy where I live. Well, what I think is, I think a lot of people love you because you're a great storyteller and your love for history. So as long as you keep doing something related to that, I think I think you'll always have some success in whatever you're doing. You know. I hope so. I mean, I enjoy what I do. I, I, I've, uh, you know, it's never been a. Uh, I've never been financially motivated to my detriment. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, but that's okay. I, I just say I love what I do. And that's, that is, that is, a lot of people say that that's the greatest thing in the world. And that's certainly a big part of it. And this was your decision. I mean, like you, you told me, you said, I'm kind of ready for it to be done. I want, I have other things I want to do. It wasn't like you were kind of forced. You just hit a point where you're ready to do some, some other things. And kind of talking to you and knowing what those plans might be. I'm excited to see you do it because I think you're going to go very far with what you're doing next. 
Oh, I, know, I hope so. I hope so. I just, it's, it, I'm just so relieved that that, that I'm going to have some elbow room and not, you know, I'm not have to worry about people painting on my building and that the landlord are screaming at me. Yeah. Or you know, people <laughs> being late for tours and people screaming that there's not a price tag on a T-shirt. You know, it's like, ah. you know, I just want to enjoy my life. I want to have a good time. So that's the uh, that's the aim. Well, now we celebrate. Yeah. So thank you guys for coming. Thanks for being being fans of Jordans and coming along to my uh, and all the tours we've done together here yeah. and everything. It's been great. It's been awesome. So thanks uh, thanks for coming. Food is coming shortly. So I always love this movie and I love seeing Martin Landau signed Scott's poster here. I'm gonna miss not getting to see that all the time. Then of course the Jane Mansfield gate from her house, the Pink Palace. And a case to Annette, Annette Funicello, and of course, the car. It's kind of interesting to have this so close by, you know, one of those roadside attractions, been in various places, and then Scott got it, and some people are, you know, of the opinion this is extremely morbid, which you know, it is, but it's also history and people are always interested in historical artifacts, that's for sure. So what Scott wasn't really mentioning was keep an eye on his dearly departed YouTube. He's going to be documenting some of this stuff on there, telling the stories of the items from the museum, which I think would be a great idea. And if you don't know who that is and what she's standing in front of, Watch his channel. You'll find out for sure. So since the museum's closing, I thought it'd be kind of fun to take a look at some of my favorite mementos from this place, like Mae West false teeth, and that George Burns doll with the half-smoked cigar. And I think we know where he got the wallpaper and the press kit right there. I don't think I ever noticed this before. Metal pieces identified as pieces of the engine and a top of a coat hanger found at the Patsy Klein crash site. That piece from the John Denver crash site. And the Brian Jones tile of the pool. That's a really crazy story. And this hanging porch swing kind of deal here was Elizabeth Montgomery's Samantha Stevens from Bewitched. Sharon Tate's bra. Sharon Tate's father's military clothing. Look, he's got one of the Lee Harvey Oswald rifle post steps. Won't you miss this sense of humor? That's, uh, that's definitely Sunny and Cher. <laughs> and of course, the amazing collection of memorabilia from the movie that Scott was talking about that has made it all worth it. Once upon a time in Hollywood. This kind of goes hand in hand with that question I asked Scott. Here's kind of his wall of fame. Some of the memorable people that have taken the tour. Remember Jack Russell from Great White? Face Off. The Reservations with Anthony Bourdain. Jerry Marin, The Last Surviving Munchkin from The Wizard of Oz. Nellie Olson. There. Kat Von D and Josh Freeze, one of my favorite drummers of all time. The Playmates. And of course, with Tarantino. Taken out in front of the old Paul Byrne J.C. Ring Estate. And there's Pugsley. Scott posted a great video about this. How this all came about and dearly departed hand in helping Pugsley get a headstone. Crazy to hear in Scott's video as a little tidbit that um, after he was done acting, he was a crew member of the A-Team. He worked on the set of the A-Team. Quite a few people here now. And of course, Scott's the one who coined the death hag movement. Maybe this is new. 
an album signed by Richard Carpenter up here and Karen Carpenter right there. Oh wow. Al Capone's DNA. No really, it is. Yeah, so I know that a lot of people that are watching this are probably kind of surprised by what Scott was saying about closing this down and kind of how bad the neighborhood has really become. And he's absolutely right. That's one of the reasons that I don't like to um, hang out in Los Angeles as much as I used to and vlog here as much as I used to is because it's like, it's become very, very filthy over the last two or three years. And um, as you heard him describe, it's a very uncomfortable environment to, uh, to be around. Do you see this? It says, this beer was bought for Scott Michaels by Dean Martin. Mm. So definitely follow Dearly Departed's YouTube so you can find out more about everything in here. And the sign is off once and for all. Alright my friends, I hope you all enjoyed today's vlog. It was sad, but it was it was fun, you know. Scott always finds a bright side in everything, and um, whatever he does next, I know he'll do a great job. Thank you all for watching. Thank you Motley Mike, Joe Aaron 48 Cynthia Merritt, and Valerie Arias for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.